Hi students, hope everyone is fine and safe. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to my new video. And today's video is about computer organization and architecture. We are going to see why is that this particular subject is very important for computer science and as well as for ECE students. So before starting this video, I would like to give you an information. Right now, I have moved to another college where we have more students from North India as well. So in the video, my way of explanation will be like 70% of English and 30% of Tamil. Then and there, I'll explain the concepts in Tamil as well. But I'll make sure that everyone understand the subject. And if you have any difficulty, you can post your questions in comment section. I will be very happy to answer that. Okay. And today's video is about computer organization and architecture. We are going to see just an introduction about this particular subject. Why is that we need to study this subject? What are the topics we are going to see in this particular subject? What is the importance of this COA? That is what we are going to see. So let me start with what is the why COA is very important. So we will start with the importance of COA. COA is a subject which is very important for both ECE and as well as CSE students. Okay. So, do you have any idea why it is so important? Uh, being an electronics and communication engineer and being a software engineer, why is that you want to learn COA? It's about, in this particular subject, you will learn more about number systems uh, and as well as logic gates and then processes and all those things, right? The main important thing to, to study this particular subject is you have to be familiar with hardware and software components and you have to be able to design or implement a sequential logic circuits that is very very important and then you have to know in detail about being an electronics engineer or being a software engineer you have to know more about processing units how it works and about uh, multi-core processors and also you will have to know a lot of input output devices memory systems and all those things and that is why you are studying this particular subject okay and to be frank, even an electronics and communication engineers, this particular subject is very, very important because right now, this is a digital world where you have mobile phones, laptops and all those things, right? So, in even if you if you take a mobile phone, you have a lot, lot of small circuits like uh, even uh, memory, like a flip-flop, something like that. In every gadget, you'll be having sequential circuits, right? So, only if you are familiar with uh, this concepts, this logical circuits and as well as uh, logic gates concepts you can able to understand how that electronic devices works and that is why you are studying this particular subject okay so we'll start with the syllabus discussion and regarding syllabus discussion first unit level full and full parting of dinner number system and logic gates and why is that you want to learn a number system is because you have to be familiar with what are the number systems and how the addressing uh, and data Transmission takes place in computers and that is why you will study a number system and number system You will study all the conversions of number system as well and very important thing you have to study about logic gates Logic gates. It's very very important because as I said in order to design any sequential or combination circuits You need logic gates right and second unit you will study basic structure of computers you will study about memory addresses, addressing modes, instruction sets and all those things. And in unit 3, you will study once again about ALU and in, in, in particular, you will study more about adders, multipliers, subtractors and all those things. And the very basic of De Morgan's theorem is also uh, covered in this particular unit. And in unit 4, you will study about control unit, that is you will study about ALU operations, pipelining, what are the data hazards you have, all those things, right? And fifth unit all about processes and parallelism, like you will study about uh, different ARM processes, how it works, what is the input output operation and all those things, okay? And we will start with basic introduction about number system, okay? And number system, why it is very important? We all know that number system is set of values to represent any quantity. Okay, and each and every number system, it has its own base. Base in Sulvo, base is nothing but if you take binary, it is of base 2. And if it is octal, it is of base 8. And if it is decimal, it is of 
base 10 and if it is hexadecimal it is of base 16. Base which is the number system and basic number system is you know, four number systems are there. One is binary and then second one is decimal and third one is octal and the fourth one is hexadecimal. Okay, more or less everything is same like uh, the, the representation of different number system will differ but the concept wise everything like to understand the number system is very very important. Okay, so if you understand only this four basic number system you can able to convert one number system to the other number system. Okay, so now before starting with you have to know in any number system the weight the magnitude of that particular position that is very very important okay so for example if you take uh, this particular number 75.56 okay so if you take this particular number system consider this as a decimal system if you say this is a decimal system uh, this is a like you have both integer part and as well as fractional part right integer part la every power I represent panano and as well as Fractional part na every power represent panna na rukhe. Okay. For integer part, you have to move from left to right. Okay. Sorry, from right to left. Okay. That is, this one we can write as 10 to the power of 0. And for this one, we can say 10 to the power of 1. And, and here, for fractional part, you have to go from right to left. Right. So, from MSB to LSB. Here, we have done from LSB to MSB. Here, it is 10 to the power of minus 1 and it is 10 to the power of minus 2, like that. Okay. Any number system, this is the very basic. Right. You can see here, before decimal, it's 0, 1, 2, 3. And after decimal, it goes like minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. Even if you take 2, that is base 2 binary number system, it's the same rule. And if it is octal, it is same rule. And if it is hexadecimal, it is of same rule. Okay, so if you take first one, we'll see about decimal system. Decimal system, this is very, very a familiar system with the people. Okay, and it starts from 0 to 9. The base is 10, which means from 0 to 9, you'll have totally 10 numbers. And that is why it is 10. Okay, and, and to easily understand, like oh, we spoke about the weights of a particular digit, right? So... If you take this particular number 286, you can see this is 0, 1 and 2, right? 10 to the power of 0, 10 to the power of 1 and 10 to the power of 2, right? So this is 1, tens and hundreds, right? In, in, in mathematics, right? So it's if you substitute values for this 1 and this is 10 and this is 100. So if you, simulate, if you simplify this, you'll get 286, which means this is 10 to the power of 0, and this is 10 to the power of 1 and this is 10 to the power of 2. This is how you have to represent a particular num uh, decimal number system. Okay. And if you take binary, binary number system is the one which we use for uh, digital codes. And computer will understand only binary, zeros and ones. Okay. And uh, if you take binary, there is only two values that is 0 and 1. But there are a lot, lot of coding te techniques that is, that is 421 code, 8421 code like like that we have to represent those zeros and ones in different forms so that if there is a sequence of numbers sequence of address that is a very big address to represent there is a particular way to represent it okay to understand the binary system is very very important and once again the same binary system can also be represented the same way 2 to the power of 0 2 to the power of 1 2 to the power of 2 and and towards this side the fractional part it goes like minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 like that Okay, and octal, octal system is, is another important uh, basic number system where you will have 0 to 7 and the base is 8. So, you will have totally 8 numbers. Okay, and after 7, you will directly go to 10, 11, 12 like that. Right, according to octal, after 7 it is 10, 11, 12 and 13. Okay, and the last one is hexadecimal. You will have alphanumeric numbers combined here, right? So it is an alphabetical characters also. That is from 0 to 9, you will have numbers, and after that, you will have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, which is represented as A, B, C, D, E, and F. 
All these are very basics you would have studied even in your school days. Right. So, in the sense, if, if we say B, then it represents 11 in hexadecimal. And if I say F, it is representing 15 in hexadecimal. Okay. So, these are the four basic number system. Okay. And you can see here, if you take any number system, like a decimal number system, binary number system, octal number system, that is a specific way that you have to represent a number system. Okay. And if you say decimal, it has to be represented like this, within brackets. And outside the bracket, you have to represent the base 10. And outside the bracket, you have to represent base 2. And outside bracket, it represents 8 for octal. And for hexadecimal, you have to represent as 16. Okay. And, and this is the summary of equivalent number system, right? How to represent a decimal, binary, octal, and hexadecimal, okay? So, you can see here for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, for decimal, it goes directly to 15, okay? And for octal, it goes up to 7, and after 7, it's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, okay? And for hexadecimal, it's 0 to 9, and then A, B, C, D, E, F, as I said before, which means now you have to understand for this particular 8, the decimal system, for in decim if it is 8 decimal number, the corresponding equal octal number is 10, and the corresponding hexadecimal number is 8, okay? And if you take 11, the corresponding octal number is 13, and the corresponding hexadecimal number is B, okay? And coming to binary, I'll tell you how to represent the decimal system to binary. Okay. Uh, to represent binary, like you have to represent in this way, right? For octal, if you take octal, you can represent as 4, 2, 1 code. We can use 4, 2, 1. What is 4, 2, 1 in the sense? It can be an encoder. Okay. So, 4, 2, 1 in the sense, if you add 4 plus 2 and plus 1, it will use 7. Okay. So, any octal number 0 to 7 can be represented with this particular code. That is, if you want to represent 4, what I can do is 1, double 0. If I want to represent 5, I can put it as 1, 0, 1. If I want to represent 6, I want to, I can represent as 1, 1, 0. Like this, it goes on. Okay. So now, you can continue this only up to 7. Okay. You can use 4, 2, 1 code only up to 7. You can see here, for 0, what I have used, 0, 0, 0. Right. And for 1, it is 1. And here, it's 2. Right? And then 3. And then 4. And then 5. Okay? And, I, and after 8, you have to use 8, 4, 2, 1 code. Right? I, since you have to understand why is that we are using and just representing. But on a whole, you can write 8, 4, 2, 1 code. Okay? For everything. Okay? So, after 8, you can see here in 4, 2, 1 code, you can use only up to 7, right? 4 plus 2 plus 1, up to 7. And if there is 8, you have to go for 8, 4, 2, 1 code, okay? So, it's 1, 0, 0, 0 for 8. And then 9, it is 1, 1, and here it's 0. Like that, it goes on, okay? And you got to understand one particular thing. For octal, 4, 2, 1 code is more than enough. For hexadecimal, you have to go for 8, 4, 2, 1 code, Okay? Right. Hope you can understand this equivalent number system as well. Okay. Now, you can see for 4, decimal 4, the equivalent binary is 0, 1, double 0. Okay. And for 5, it is 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay. Right. Hope you understand this. And apart from this basic number system, you can convert one number system to the other number system. Okay. And you can see these are the conversions in number system. Okay. And you have problems in all this topics okay you have to be familiar with each rules and regulation right you can see any radix to decimal and decimal to any radix binary to octal binary to hexadecimal octal to binary hexadecimal to binary and octal to hexadecimal hexadecimal to octal and then any radix to any radix what does it mean any radix to any radix any radix to any radix means there is no specific number system for example you can say this as an four number system and from four number system you can convert it you can convert it to six number system like this if there is no specific 
uh, if does it comes under a specific number system like binary a decimal or uh, octal or hexadecimal we can we, we call it as any radix okay and similarly like we have any conversions between it between the number system from octal to decimal decimal to hexadecimal similarly we can convert any radix to any other radix okay so this is a basic introduction about coa so what we have seen today is we have seen why is that you want to learn coa and what is the basics about a number system and what are the equivalent number system and what are the different types of conversion you have thank you students thank you for watching kandipa in the video ungalku ellarku romba useful ah irukum nambra subscribe passionate professor and keep learning thank you very much